Okay, so it's been 32,000 views since I made the last identity fraud video, and it's probably still climbing. So I think it's time I finally make a legitimate tutorial. Hi there, I'm Flarix, and I'm gonna give you all you need to know about the Roblox game Identity Fraud. By the way, I want to give a huge shout out to Marco Arcanum, Tech MC, and Icerix because they've contributed a lot to the Identity Fraud series thing that's been going on in my channel, and I want to give a thank you. So yeah, let's get started. So, Identity Fraud is a game that combines both horror and puzzle concepts. In this game, you need to make it through three mazes and a final boss without being killed by any of the monsters that lurk within these mazes. So yeah, let's begin the first maze. So to get past the first maze, you will need to find a mirror. Once you find this mirror, you need to turn right and stick to the left wall as I am doing right now. As long as you keep doing this, you will eventually find the exit of the first maze and a button that goes along with it. If the button is red, that means that it's on cooldown, and you need to wait for it to be green before you can press it and open the gate to the second maze. If the button is green, however, congratulations, you just passed through the first maze! On to the second one. For the second maze, it's pretty straightforward. You just need to stick to the left wall continually until you eventually find the gate to the third maze. Now, to unlock this gate, you will need to press a button, a code will appear, and you need to type that code in the chat to open the door to the third maze. Now, here's a cool thing to note about Maze 2. Maze 2 seems easy, but there's actually a secret disco room that you can find from it. At the end of the video, I will be showing you how to get there step by step, so stick around. Now, before we waste too much time, let's move on to Maze 3. So Maze 3 is a lot more random. There isn't a specific pattern to solving this maze, but the main goal of this maze is to find a radio that is beeping a Morse code on a shelf. And generally, the closer you are to the radio, the louder the beeping will sound. So it's basically a game of hot and cold. Once you finally reach the radio, there will be a metal gate kind of next to it, and you will need to decode what the radio is saying through a Morse code to number translator. The translated code will tell you all the numbers you need to put in the chat, so you can watch as I do now if you're confused.
ta-da! The door is now open to this long hallway. After crossing this hallway, you will see at the end that there is a stone tablet. On the tablet is written hexadecimal code, also known as base 16. You will need to go and find a hexadecimal, or base 16, to text translator, and you need to translate all the double digits you see down here. It usually will tell you something like change all blanks to another number. For example, this translates to change all threes into fives, as you see I'm doing right here. This will finally open the gate to the final boss. Upon the sequence that follows, you will be given a rocket launcher, and your best bet is to circle around the boss and continue shooting it with the rocket launcher. Of course, you don't want to get too close because you will be knocked back and his laser will lock onto you, which more or less kills you. You will need to restart. As long as you do this though, if you get the boss to half health, stage 2 will begin. The floor will fill up with lava, and you will have to walk around these stones to shoot him. He will be throwing bombs at you, and your best bet is to basically walk around these little stones, don't fall into the lava, and avoid the bombs. And you win. And it will kick you from the game. At least it gives you a badge though. So yeah, that's more or less how to beat the game, minus the monsters. Let's talk about the monsters now. <laughs> this is Stan. He's the master of stairs. Stan appears in all three mazes. You legit just have to look at him and he will stop moving. But if you look away, he's gonna start following you. Like that. If you ever happen to bump into him while you're looked away, however, it will make this huge, weird sound as if you're in the middle of a tornado. I know, it's... it's terrible. Have a listen. Now, Stan is pretty creepy, but to get past him, you literally just need to look at him and keep walking backwards into whatever direction you want to go which kind of makes the whole thing annoying. People say Stan is more annoying than scary for the most part. But a way that you can actually get him off you is you need to look away, wait until he gets close to you, walk and bump into him, and then run away as fast as you can. That should actually de-aggro him, and he will lock off for about a minute and then try and find a new target. And yeah, 
That's, that's more or less everything that Stan has. Let's move on to the next one. This is Ralph. He appears in the first maze, and he is a mass murderer. He has this huge sword on his back, and if you ever see him, you should probably start running, because he is actually faster than you in terms of straight hallways. However, if you actually cut corners, it takes him longer to walk around them than it will take you, because he needs to stop, turn around, and keep walking. So if you keep cutting corners, you should be able to lose him, but... Another way to get him off of you is by being a snitch and sacrificing another person. Yeah, that's how to get away from Ralph. If he kills you, it will make this iconic Roblox sound. And you will basically respawn. Yay. Moving on to the monsters in the second maze. This is Alice or Lady Stan or whatever the heck people call her. Basically, she wasn't really given a name by the creator but people found, I guess, through lore that her name was Alice or something like that. People argue a lot. It's a really controversial topic. She can be found in a second maze. If you see a yellow glowing eye, that means that Alice is in her pixie state, meaning she isn't harmful. However, if she materializes, then she will immediately run after you and throttle you, and you will hear a large scream as you die. If you want to get away from her, I suggest not looking at her and not moving. She might end up walking past you and she won't run after you. If you're with a group of people, however, don't get your hopes up because she's probably going to materialize the more people that are around. However, seeming as she's an extremely mysterious monster, there is no confirmed way of getting away from her. So good luck with that. So yeah, moving on to the third maze. This is James. James. Yeah. James. Okay, he actually has like two bazillion glowing red eyes. It's... I'm exaggerating there. He's scary at first, but actually he has a pretty derpy AI. Basically, if you stop moving, he will not attack you. His face glows up when he's mad at you, and when he's neutral, his face looks like a... yeah, it looks like a grenade. <laughs> Usually in the third maze, you need to walk around a lot more rather than running away. So to maneuver around him, you should probably walk extremely slowly, like really, really slowly, until you eventually proceed to the next room. If you're in a group of people, however, I think it's better for one person to lure James away while everyone else goes to another room because it's really hard to cooperate with a bunch of people and move extremely slowly at the same times, which makes him annoying for groups in the third maze. Some groups of people have actually tried to mess up his AI, which they did successfully. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, he's, he's, I don't know, yeah, he's, he's a pretty derpy person, whatever. Now, there is one final and extremely special monster in this game whose name is Fraud. He is a master of disguise. He spawns in the first maze, and he looks exactly like Stan without the red glowing eyes. If you see him, he will not walk in any diagonals, he will usually follow a grid pattern as he maneuvers around the first maze. If you see him wave at you, and you make direct eye contact with him, you need to turn around right away and run, because this will happen. Now, if you don't look at him in the eye, he won't actually run after you as long as you try and just walk away as fast as you can, but fraud is almost impossible to escape. I spent an entire afternoon trying to escape him 20 times, and I only succeeded that one time. When Fraud actually kills you, if you haven't noticed, he takes your form. So, if you find him again, you might be literally looking at yourself. I mean, that's more or less why his name is Fraud. He basically commits identity fraud on you. 
and I think that was one of the main purposes of the game as far as it goes. So yeah, him being the final monster, I find him the most fun, but also the most frustrating to come across. And with all of the monsters finally done and explained, with everything almost completely covered, we are finally going to move on to the bonus of this video, which is how to get to the disco room. We are going to be starting from the second maze, and as I play this video in full 100% speed, I need you to follow exactly where I go if you want to get to the disco room. And here we are. Finally, we will now be led across a long hallway. At the end of the hallway, we will be given a code. This is written in base 64, so we will need to find a base 64 to text translator. It will tell us a code that we can type in the chat to open the door. And after that, we are more or less in the disco room. So yeah, that was all folks. That was all for this super long tutorial that took over a year since the stream to complete. I hope you all enjoyed. Once again, thank you so much. And I will see you all later. Peace.